It's one of our greatest challenges, one that can no longer be ignored. Our basic infrastructures, the systems we depend on to keep our communities safe, healthy, and prosperous, are not only under the strain of continued growth, but also in serious need of repair. It's easy to see the need for new and repaired roads and bridges, but there's also a hidden infrastructure, more than a million miles of underground pipes which transport water to homes and businesses. A new report details the severity and impact of aging and expanding drinking water infrastructure in the United States. One of the biggest concerns that we have is the repairs, the replacements, and the extensions to the existing buried water infrastructure. The Buried No Longer report brings all of the issues to the surface so that we can begin the conversation about how to tackle these challenging issues. This report is the most thorough and comprehensive analysis ever undertaken of the nation's drinking water infrastructure renewal needs. And the needs are large. It's estimated that over the next 25 years, costs to repair and expand U.S. drinking water infrastructure will top $1 trillion. That's a big number. That does not include new treatment plants to meet new standards. It does not include wastewater, stormwater, and numerous other investments that, that have to be made. So all in all, the report is important and I think frankly surprising because it's the first of its kind that was built on actual analysis of the drinking water system and the, the needs that we show are, are frankly startling. It's a cost which, to some extent, will be borne by consumers. Bottom line, for most, household water bills will go up. Paying for necessary infrastructure replacement will be a challenge for some utilities. One of the biggest challenges that water utility managers have when they're looking at the addition of infrastructure to the system or the replacement of existing infrastructure replacement is how they go about financing that. They're probably going to use a mixture of things. They're going to use rates, they're going to use debt, and they're going to probably use other sort of cash reserves that they might have. When they go to borrow money, there's a couple of different ways that they typically go about it. Many, many utilities will go to the state revolving loan funds that are available in their states. Others will go to the bond market, yet others will still go and borrow from lending institutions. And the American Water Works Association is also working on innovative financing options that the utilities can use in the future uh, to help keep the cost of infrastructure replacement low to the utility customers. As highlighted in the report, the needs vary by region. The challenges will also vary based on utility size. Because these costs are basically spread over the customers in a certain area, that smaller utilities who have fewer customers will have a higher per customer increase in their water bills as we go forward. We could in fact uh, come up with a national average water bill increase, but that wouldn't have meaning for you in the community where you live. What we wanted to do was provide something that's a little more specifically tailored. Regardless of size, communities facing water infrastructure replacement and expansion need to plan for ongoing costs. This is different from uh, many capital investments because it's a continuous ongoing investment challenge when a utility has to rebuild a treatment plant or replace water storage tanks. That is a one-time expenditure. The money can be borrowed through the bond markets, the expenditure made, and that money repaid over, over a long period of time. The infrastructure challenge that we document in this report is fundamentally different in that it occurs year after year after year as pipes that were laid down in the earliest years come to the end of their useful lives and have to be replaced. As soon as that's been accomplished, the pipes that were laid down just a little bit later come to the end of their lives, and that goes on and on so that by the end of the study period, which we run out through 2050, uh, it's likely to start all over again. Many utilities are already addressing their infrastructure needs, but for those who haven't started or those behind the curve, the problem will only get worse with time. If you delay in any particular community, uh, the need for reinvestment doesn't go away. It simply is deferred for a while, and when ultimately the pipes reach a point where the reinvestment simply cannot be put off any longer, the cost is likely to be far higher. There was an old advertisement that ran years ago that said, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. This is definitely that kind of a case. You can make the investments, when they're timely 
or you can delay and pay much more for the investments later. There is still time to act, and while the costs may be large, the payoff in terms of benefits that water service provides is worthwhile. The national average cost of water right now is, is less than $3.75 a thousand gallons. When you think what that delivers to your community, it's an incredible bargain. If you don't have a water system that can provide water to the community, to the schools, to the park systems, to the zoos, uh, and provide fire protection and public health, then, then that piece of infrastructure won't allow the other pieces of infrastructure to prosper. For the most part, people alive today, at least in my generation, didn't pay for the original investment in, in drinking water infrastructure. This was a, a, a bequest to us by earlier generations who did build it. Our responsibility is to make the investments necessary to pass this on to our descendants in good working order so that they continue to enjoy all of the public goods and benefits that come from a sound drinking water infrastructure system.